this course is concerned we have completed uh, first john the five chapters in the last class we've gone through second john so today we will touch on third john we'll do a quick recap of second john and then do third john today we'll see how it goes um if we don't complete it then we will complete it by next class but by next class definitely we will start off from the uh, the book of john which is uh, one of the um, in gospel accounts so uh, i would request somebody to please pray and then we can uh, take this forward so uh, anyone like to volunteer to pray yeah father god just yeah go ahead go ahead, go ahead. Father God, we just come before you, throne, Father God, once again, Father God. Father God, thanking you for this time, Father God. Father God, thanking you for ma'am and all his students, Father God. Father God, give your blessing and give your wisdom and knowledge, Father God, that we are going to study, Father God, the John third, Father God. Father God, give your revelation more, Father God, and understanding, Father God. Take upcoming time, Father God. Thanking you, Father God, for everything. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Kiran. Thank you for uh, praying today. Uh, so we will have a quick look at uh, uh, Second John, the book of Second John. And uh, I know in the last class we covered it, but then, uh, you know, just a recap. Okay. So John is writing, Apostle John is writing to uh, an elect, or elect is usually... Uh, you know, somebody who's in a position of leadership and authority, and I told you that it's a lady that he's actually addressing this letter to. Uh, and in this um, epistle, he doesn't give his name. So he just introduces himself as the elder. Okay? Uh, I told you, generally in Paul's writings, Paul used to give that, you know, uh, Paul and Apostle, Paul and Apostle and God servant of Christ. So the letters would begin that way because sometimes the letters would be very long. And so having the name at the end of it uh, would, uh, you know, delay uh, the reader from knowing who has written it. So uh, they would write it uh, up front in the beginning of the letter. So here John is just saying the elder. Okay, but we know uh, as uh, these books have been studied, I told you when we started off that uh, a lot of the um, uh, disciples of, of John and uh, those who had been mentored by the disciples of John, they all gave witness to the fact that this was written by Apostle John and he probably wrote it to the churches uh, in the region. Uh, those There were seven specific churches that you know, he addressed the book of Revelation to as well. So there seems to be a kind of an apostolic oversight over these churches. So in these three letters he's writing to these churches these communities and uh, uh, it seems like this particular episode is written to uh, one one such community where there is an elder who's a lady and so uh, or, or elect he calls her elect lady and he writes to her uh, and he uses himself as the elder okay so as one of those spiritual leaders of the community and then there are some common themes which we, we saw which are a repetition from 1 John. So uh, uh, things like, you know, he says uh, that some of the people are walking in the truth. So he encourages people to walk in the truth. Now, truth is a, a key thing that John holds on to. You will also see this in the Gospel of John. Um, and here, repetitively, you know, he comes back to the subject of uh, walk in the truth. And, uh, you know, the truth is Christ. And we as believers, uh, we not only profess the truth, but we also have to live by the truth. So we see that here. You know, he encourages the believers to live in the truth. And he also uh, is happy. He uh, notices that there are people who are walking in the truth. So he says, okay, I'm so happy that uh, you know, your children are walking in the truth. Um, uh, and uh, by this, by children walking in the truth, he probably was referring to... Um, uh, you know, uh, the, the believers in the church, okay, uh, who are overseen by this elect lady. 
uh, and then he continues and uh, he says that you know uh, when we say that we love god it's about loving one another uh, that again is a repetitive theme that comes through then he says walk according to his commandments remember earlier in one john he said that if we say that we love god we must keep his commandments so again a repetition about the life that needs to be lived and not just the faith that needs to be professed then again another very important theme here he says uh, you know there are a lot of deceivers uh, who have gone into the world and they don't confess jesus as coming in the flesh and i've told you repeatedly that during that times there was gnosticism where they did not deny the deity of christ but they denied the humanity of christ both of which you know if you deny either of it uh, christ law jesus is not christ so uh, it it was a cue it was kind of targeting the uh, fact that jesus was christ so he is confirming and he saying look jesus is the christ but there are people who teach that he was never really fully a man and he talks about the spirit of the antichrist deception deceiver and uh, so he encourages the believers you see uh, in a believer's life the important thing is to start well but uh, more importantly to finish well so he says that if you are not going to take care if uh, uh, you are not going to be careful look to yourselves he says okay so look to yourselves meaning be careful be careful to preserve the faith to preserve the um testimony to preserve you know your relationship with god and your relationship with people so basically your faith right and everything that makes up your faith from doctrine to to uh, your conduct to your character to everything so he says look to yourselves why because you don't want to lose those things because if we are careless you see there are all these dangers in the world okay uh, there are shifting standards and now he is emphasizing deception and uh, he says that uh, uh, you have worked right in our journey with the lord we have come a long distance so he says you have worked uh, for these things and if you will take care right or you will be careful uh, then you will receive a full reward so again a word of encouragement there for the believers reminding them you know keep pressing on in this journey because god has a reward for us you know how hebrews uh, tells us that um when uh, what um god is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him okay so uh, hebrews 11:6 so we have a reward and with that he is encouraging the believer and saying that you know don't let go of your faith don't listen to deceivers and then he comes back uh, right and he says that if you find people who are deceiving in this manner quite strictly he says he says that um, do not receive him into your house not greet him because john knows how dangerous this is who is the center of our faith who is the center of our faith who is the center yes jesus is the center so if there is a um, doctrine which says that jesus christ is not god then is that dangerous or not yes it is very very dangerous and john realizes the danger of this and so you find him uh warning the believer he just doesn't say don't listen to such people but he goes to the extent of saying don't receive that person into your house don't greet him okay so it is that dangerous we cannot afford the foundations of our faith to shake so when you when you smell deception don't go in that direction okay so be careful because we don't want to lose what we have you know, do you remember that matthew 25 parable where you have the five virgins who have the oil and the five who don't have and the bridegroom comes in the night uh, and then what happens you know the ones who don't have they come asking the ones who have it now the ones who have it lose 
what they have how will they go with the right group so they said we are so sorry we can't give it to you because there was enough time given for everyone to gain their own oil okay or that would be our intimacy with god you know develop that intimacy develop that relationship with god and that relationship with god should never be compromised that is the primary thing and john you know they call him the apostle of love because he writes so much about you know the love of god for us and the way we should love him that the way we should love one another the apostle of love and here you see that apostle of love is very strictly saying don't even call that person to your house don't greet him so we might ask the apostle where is your love apostle john how can you be so strict how can you be so rude okay but even in this there is a love that apostle john is talking about and that love is to preserve the faith of the believer uh and you know um, i'm sure that you know uh, uh apostle must have instructed them much about how to take care of such an individual how to lead them to christ but why is they have gone way beyond okay and they have become deceivers he saying you know it is now time to protect yourself so don't even go close to that person and he says for he who greets him shares in his evil deeds so that bad if we interact with this kind of a person and we ignore that they are denying uh, jesus as christ he says what are we doing we are sharing in his evil deeds okay so be warned be warned and in the last days we have to be warned we have to be very careful the reason is people may be spreading falsehood out there but we don't want to be deceived ourselves we have to reach the finish line and when we reach the finish line we are told there is a full reward don't miss out on your full reward so he is encouraging the believers live like this live in the truth follow his commands love one another stay away from deceivers hold on to your faith and then he closes off the uh, this letter to the elect lady and uh, he seems to be uh, a proponent of meeting people in person as compared to writing a letter so he says look i have written these things to you uh, and uh, i have you know many other things to write to you but i don't want to write it on uh, like you know with ink can those days uh, you know whatever they used to to talk and he says it is better i hope to come to you and speak face to face that our joy may be full you know the way we feel right online classes but this is anyway somewhat face to face however you know john was the kind he wanted the in person experience on campus experience of meeting the community so uh, he says uh, you know this uh, church group uh, i'd rather see you in person and then uh, there are other issues also which i want to talk about many things which are on my heart which i want to share with you and he just closes it and he says the children of your elect sister greet you amen so it seems like there was another community of believers and uh, he says your elect sister okay elect sister could be referring to another leader okay another leader um or, or it could be referring to another church but that's kind of the uh, reference that he has here so he closes off with a greeting and uh, some may ask the question why isn't apostle john uh, putting the name of these elect people or why isn't he writing his own name clearly you know john the apostle he could have done that isn't it but seems like uh, these were great times of persecution uh, we have seen how he has mentioned time and again about the spirit of the antichrist the antichrist deceivers so uh, within the church and outside the church there seems to be a lot of turmoil and uh, like 
there is persecution okay? so it is possible that he was trying to protect himself he was trying to protect the people that he was writing to and that is why we don't know the names of the people who he is writing to uh, and here in this in this especially in this episode of second john so uh, yeah so that is about second john and um, if this is all right then we can move on to third john is that okay everyone or anything that you you want to discuss ask yeah it's okay it's a uh, it's very simple right to understand okay it's okay it's okay with aran dev yeah so i think we've got a good uh, um hang of uh, one john and second john and we're in a good position to move on to third john okay wonderful all right so as we have seen there are two letters which john wrote and this is the third letter which he is writing to the people and let us see who he is writing this to what are the themes that he is covering uh, in this letter and uh, <coughs> obviously uh, this is also written during the time of persecution so you know we may not see uh, a lot of details in here so he starts off again hiding his name but uh, he writes the name of the individual uh, to whom this is addressed so he says the elder that is himself he introduces himself as the elder uh, then he says to the beloved gaius who i love in truth okay so uh, we find here that there is a gaius who seems to be the leader of this community of churches uh he says beloved gaius so there is a good relationship that he has with this individual and the person gaius is um a uh, seen in the book of acts in a couple of places acts 19 and 20 you would find a reference to a person called gaius again paul refers to gaius in first corinthians 1 Uh, and verse fourteen, and then again Romans sixteen and verse twenty-three. Now, are all these cases the same? Not very sure. All right. However, uh, uh, John is writing to a leader by the name of Gaius. So he writes to this person, and um, he continues his greeting. He says, "Whom I love in truth." Uh, what does that mean? I love in truth. what would be your understanding of that you can put it in your own words your own explanation Okay, will you look it up and uh, share with me? Maybe in the next class, next as in next week. Okay, can do some research. Look it up in different translations. Look it up in your ESO. Maybe you know, read a few commentaries and let me know what it might mean to love somebody in the truth. and here john is saying that you know some uh, my beloved gaius who my love in the truth okay now uh, the greeting sort of continues and he says beloved i pray that you may prosper he's writing to gaius but i'm sure it's extended the blessing the greeting is extended to this community he says i pray that you may prosper meaning the community also may prosper in all things and be in health 
just as your soul prospers. So uh, this one was, it's a greeting. And uh, this is like saying shalom. Uh, in Hebrew, the word shalom refers to wholeness. It refers to bless, being blessed, spirit, soul, and body. So uh, pronouncing shalom, the Jewish people, you know when they pronounce shalom over uh, each other, when the priests pronounce it over the people, it's like saying, you know, the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you. It's a blessing which is spoken over them in, in completeness. So John is extending a greeting of blessing here. And he says that uh, I want you to be blessed in all things. And here uh, uh, he uses the term prosper, but you know, we know what it means. It's not just like a material kind of a, uh, increase, but it has to do with the fullness, the abundance of God. He says spirit, and he refers to, uh, sorry, soul, and he also refers to health, that you may prosper in everything, in everything, in your soul. Soul has to do with mind, will, emotions, okay? Uh, it is important for God that we are strong in every way. So should uh, I be strong mentally, emotionally, um, you know, in my decision-making capacity? Yes, internally, God wants us to be blessed. So if there is uh, anything affecting our health or the health of our soul, God is concerned about it. And we know that uh, Jesus has not only paid the price for our physical healing, but he has also paid the price for our uh, emotional, our soulish realm. So he says, just as your soul prospers. So because Jesus has paid the price for our soul, we can be whole in, uh, you know, in our uh, soul man. So, you know, I can go into the depths of that, but I'm just trying to avoid doing that. Uh, and you are all aware, you're all aware. We have done this earlier in the human soul. I think we have a course on that. So uh, it is important for a person's soul also to be prosperous. And of course, you know, John adds health here. And he says that you may be in health just as your soul prospers. So uh, he, the way this has been put is that the internal health is important and hopefully that will reflect okay, onto our external health. So uh, he is Jehovah Rapha, healing our soul as well as our bodies. So this is the blessing that John pronounces over the people. Then he says, for rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. So it's a word of exhortation. Earlier in the previous episode as well, remember he told the elect lady, I'm so happy that your children are walking in the truth or the church people are living the truth of God. Uh, here again, he says, that uh, there is testimony. I've heard that you people in your community, they are good people. They are following the word of God. They're keeping the commandments. Okay. And, uh, and how does it affect the leader to know that people are actually living out the truth? It makes the leader joyful. So he says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. So he seems to be a real father, enjoying the uh, uh, truthfulness of his children. And he is proud that whatever has been imparted to the people, whatever has been taught to the people uh, is of good use. And the people are actually living out the truth of God's word. So. Uh, these are the blessings that he speaks over the people. And, uh, you know, he is uh, happy about this particular community. Now let's go ahead and see what other themes he is going to cover. So we are at verse 8 now. And he says, 
beloved uh, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and the strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church so again exhortation it seems like this is a good community and he saying that you people you are sincere whatever you do not just for the people among you but that's where the the early church is to refer to the believers as brethren so you do for the brethren and for the stranger so not just for the believers community but for the outsiders as well where you are um, faithful you are sincere okay uh, and you have borne witness of your love before the church so uh, it talks about a very um, uh, you know how do i like if, just think about it for any leader this would be incredible to have a uh, people who have heard the truth they are walking in the truth and they are uh, sincere in the ministry which they uh, you know which they put out so john is encouraged about this community and is encouraging that community starting off with you know great words that will bless them then he says if you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of god you will do well because they went forth for his name's sake taking nothing from the gentiles so he is talking about visitors he is talking about um, travelers who are serving god and in those times uh, whenever people used to go doing the work of the ministry like if you study about paul and um, his teammates uh, they would just go and uh, stay with some believer in a given city okay so uh, uh, the hospitable family would take care of them uh, and wherever possible of course you know paul was a tent maker so he used to do his bit to to um survive in in that place but in general there would be people who would open up their homes and open up you know um open up their hearts be ready to give up their resources to take care of those who are visiting and particularly for those he says went forth for his name sake so you know people who go and preach people who do the ministry people who serve you know in any way that god has called them to serve so uh, those kind of people he says that uh, there are those who are traveling and when you take care of such people you will do well so he is talking about hospitality when you uh, are hospitable it's a good thing and uh, in those times it seems like they were not taking anything from the gentiles so within the community of believers the resources were distributed the resources were um given out to those who were in need so it's a loving community okay and people were in need so he's encouraging hospitality that he says we therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth so again his way of talking is like saying that when we profess the truth it should be seen in our lives so in addition to everything else that he has already mentioned in 1 john second john he is talking here about hospitality he says there are people who are serving god and they are not getting any resources you know from the world out there he says gentiles or uh, the those who don't know about the kingdom of god we are the ones who have to take care of them so you will do well to take care of god's people so receive such people and he says when we do that what do we become you know the term uh, just like paul you know paul was a um, person who engaged in team work and wherever he went so there were people serving alongside paul in many places he uh, you know that first to them as fellow workers uh, you know in christ similarly 
John is also saying that when we are hospitable to those who are serving God, we too become fellow workers for the truth. So it's like saying, uh, you and I may not go and preach, but when we help the person who is serving God, what are we doing? We are fellow workers. They are sharing the truth, but we are also helping in serving, sharing the truth of God's word. So that's a great encouragement for hospitality. And now he's addressing a particular person. Okay. Um, and he brings up the name of this individual. He says, I wrote to the church, but Diotrephus. So he's mentioning about this man who loves to have the preeminence among them, does not receive us. So he spoke about hospitality and now he's referring to an individual who himself does not um, receive this word about hospitality. And he says, he seems to be somebody who wants or he says loves to have preeminence. Okay, so preeminence is uh, like prominence in a place. Like you want to be noticed. You want to be, um, uh, you know, like you want to be the center of attraction. You want to be that person, uh, you know, who everybody else is talking about. So preeminence, prominence. So that seems to be an individual who loves fame. Okay, in their midst, and he is not receiving the instruction of. John and thereby he says he does not receive us or he is also the kind who um, is not hospitable. Okay, Neither is he giving any value to the apostles words or is he giving, uh, showing his faithfulness, sincerity through hospitality. So he says therefore if I come I will call to mind deeds which he does ratting against us with malicious words. So it seems like there was an individual who went deep into pride. Okay, And uh, we have talked about this earlier, about how pride can lead, lead to self-deception, how pride can lead to a place in, in an individual's life where they think they're doing right, but you know they're actually uh, going against God and they are dishonoring the people of God. And in his pride, what did this Diotrephus end up doing? John has already said he's not listening to the words, he's not doing uh, the work of hospitality, and now he says, you know, he is creating damage. So pride makes us do things like that, isn't it? He says, prating against us with malicious words. So, Diotrephus was speaking ill of Apostle John and maybe some of the co-workers also. And I don't know whether Diotrephus realized that Apostle John knows, but Apostle John knew. Knew to the extent that in all the loving words that he wrote, the Apostle of Love has spoken an individual's name, Diotrephus. Now, sometimes you wonder, is it loving to uh, publicly disgrace an individual? Okay, like this, where there is a, an accusation being put on Diotrephus. He's, he likes fame, he doesn't uh, listen to our words, he's not hospitable, and you know, the things that he does, these are misdeeds, includes inclusive of accusing the apostle and his co-workers. So is it okay to publicly uh, talk about somebody's mistake? That's my question to you. What do you think? Any believer who's doing wrong, should we stand at the pulpit and say, oh, you know, uh, so and so. Okay, let me call the person John. John is like this. Be careful of John. 
would we do that or if we are doing it what is the right context okay this is definitely not from the pulpit but how would you address it in that case let's say someone is uh, you know doing something wrong how would you address it how would you deal with that uh, negative person in the conversation uh sometimes uh, ma'am ha the person is we can speak to a person individually but if that person is a problem headache for the whole congregation ah. without mentioning the name we can okay. uh, tell what is the problem he creating that so we can tell the congregation to avoid that problem so indirectly that person is doing something but we are not uh, uh, choking that person but what is the issue we are explaining but we are uh, suggesting the congregation to stay away from that kind of things like that we can uh -huh. do that for us for me okay okay uh okay thank you thank you thomas for sharing that uh, i just want to know the thoughts of others as well what do you feel there somebody who is doing something wrong uh, should we address it from the pulpit what do the others feel Uh, no ma'am personally we can sit with them and uh, lead them to right way but not uh, like like uh, so like uh, and share to other person like third party only to between and something okay 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 so you're going to saying that uh, we have to deal with it uh, with that person not to bring it up before others Okay. Uh, how about the others? Because uh, I'm sure all of you are going to step into the ministry, right? So that's why I'm asking you: How should we deal with it? Do you know of any scriptures that will help us in this situation? ma'am can you hear me right yes yeah. yes yes uh, we should not do uh, in the congregation but uh, i i am talking practically if we do like this talking uh, in uh, talking about somebody in our, our uh, congregation hmm. so others will also think like if uh, if i do like this uh in some other days next time huh. uh, he will tell my name also so yeah yeah uh, some people may or uh, they will go away from the church mm -hmm. so we should not do that okay 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 fine fine sure karan thank you for sharing your opinion here and uh, dev says if he or she is taking believers away from their faith then we should Uh, address from the pulpit uh, yeah kiran uh, go ahead kiran yes ma'am once uh, just want to say just one minute once yeah. uh, here in my church it happened many times um, uh, over here like uh, uh, with uh, they would say the that person and they used to give like a one and two three times to like uh, improve and something different and you know? if they will not understand then they used to take like meeting and then after they used to say to everyone this is happening so we are so we careful and you know, this is mistake and the other leaders and other the youth they are coming they will learn like a bad manners and you know? so yeah sure sure can okay, sure so uh, yeah so she is talking about warning them talking to them right initially yes yes ma'am okay fine fine 
Okay. All right. So uh, you see, we can go back to Matthew chapter eighteen. Okay, I will post some. Um, yeah. I'll post a scripture here in our chat. Okay, Aaron says we might hurt their sentiment too. Okay, yeah, you are right. So we have to be careful about that. Okay, so here is it. I got it in some simple version. So Matthew eighteen verse fifteen through seventeen. Mm, Thomas, can you please read it? If you can see the chat. Okay, no worry. I'll I'll quickly read it for us. It says, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you. You have won them over, but if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church, and if they refuse to listen, even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. So. uh i think there's a clear progression isn't it so basically there is a way of dealing with people who are sitting in the church they are doing wrong and uh, first step is we have to talk to them personally so here john has brought out the name and he said oh dietary fist so obviously the apostle of love knows this progress and hopefully you know he and the elder gaius and others would have engaged in this kind of interaction with dietary fist so meet the person in private talk to them tell them their sin if they listen well and good if they don't listen you take one or two more of your elders okay uh, not to intimidate the person but you know you all are witnesses to the fact that you are speaking the truth to this individual So you speak to that person. Hopefully, he will correct himself, right? If he doesn't correct himself, then so there is a stage. You can't just go directly tell the whole church this is the problem. No, many chances have to be given to this individual. So one chance, second chance, third chance. What happens? He's not listening. So to those three others also, if they still refuse to listen, then. you can tell it to the church why tell it to the church the way uh, they said you know there are certain sins which you cannot uh, like condone okay because it can spread like um, some you know, it can spread like a disease within the church so we have to be careful we, and if we don't deal with it if we just try to hide it and say it's okay only some people are uh, saying that jesus is not christ what will happen nothing will happen but these kind of things will cause the entire church to get polluted or you know some division you know in the corinthian church um paul addressed a man who was in a sexual sin okay so it's like this they have to be addressed if they are not addressed then it can be dangerous for the entire church and that is the reason you know in this case we find apostle john directly dealing with this man called dietrichus it seems like he somebody who is not willing to change he is set in his proud ways to the extent that he is speaking uh, malicious words or in other words you know he is accusing wrong things accusing of wrong things evil things uh, even though things about the apostle okay and that is the reason because if this man he is not spoken about he might corrupt the faith of other believers and that is why apostle john had to mention and uh, you know there are other scriptures also that clearly command us that you know if there are people who cause divisions 
right? That they must, you must deal with them in a public way. So this is Romans 16, 17. I will just read the verses for us. Now I urge you, brethren, not those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learn and avoid them. So like basically you avoid such people. And uh, uh, in 2 Timothy 4, uh, Paul writes, verses 14 and 15, Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. So Paul is also publicly putting somebody's name there, Alexander the coppersmith. He did much harm to me. May the Lord repay him according to his works. You also must beware of him, for he has greatly resisted our words. So there were these one or two people because of their attitudes, which they were unwilling to correct. I'm sure after intervention, they were unwilling to change. And that is the reason the apostles were addressing them by name and warning the other people and saying, you know, uh, please, you know, stay away from such people. So he says, he, this person is not practicing uh, hospitality. Okay. Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. So he says, you don't be like Diotrephus. He's not a good example of a believer but you be a hospitable person there are all these traveling ministers why don't you give them space when you are serving them in whatever capacity that you can you are actually partnering together in the truth of god's word then he says he who does good is of god but he who does evil has not seen god so you see john the apostle he is about Practical faith. If you say, I love God, and you cannot love your brother, your sister, whom you see, God you cannot see. You know, what kind of a faith are you professing? So he's saying, show me the proof. Show me the, the action. Then I will tell you whether you have the proof or not. And even James said that. We can say I have faith, but if there are no actions, then there is no connection. Okay, that's a very unfortunate way of living a believing life. Only words, no action. Okay, so he who does good is of God. He is kind of summing it up like that. So we say we are born of God, right? We belong to God. We are in Christ Jesus. But what should that person be doing? Do good. So those who are born of God, you know, we said we overcome the world. This is our victory, even our faith, all the, you know, powerful verses there. But in lifestyle, he who does good is of God. But he who does evil, he has not seen God. Okay, so... Another thing you notice here, remember John was saying fellowship. Uh, our fellowship is with the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And we said that the life of the Godhead flows through us. So if we are connected with the Godhead or if we have seen the Godhead, the goodness that comes from there will flow out of our life. So our knowledge of God also is very, very important. So if you don't know, and when I say no, it's not just knowing the verses, knowing, you know, how to pray, knowing, okay, how to do this, how to do all the spiritual activities. Those activities must help us have a real walk with the Lord. So when we know God in a deep way, in an intimate way, we are able to do good. But when we don't know the nature of God, it becomes difficult because we don't have a standard. God is good. Remember, he said this also. Because he is, you be. He is the truth. You walk in the truth. So when we know God, that flows out of our life. So he is leaving a word of encouragement for the believers. And he's saying, look, don't be like the evildoers. And especially dietrifers, who is not a hospitable individual. Okay. So we will pick up from this. Uh, a point right after the break. So let's go ahead, let's take a 10 minute break and we'll come back. We will meet at uh, 10 01. 
okay and resume uh, this lecture all right okay class see you soon thank you